Hey, Brick Maniacs. Welcome back to another Mobile Designer Studio episode. I have John Canepa joining me. I think we're interrupting some chores. It looks like he's doing a little bit of a dusting there. But we got to talk about the MASH helicopter. This was a yeah. long-awaited return, something that had been out of the inventory for quite a while. We got the Bell license. We are able to make the actual helicopter the, the proper way through the correct channels. So happy to see it back in the lineup. What did you think about getting another shot at designing this kit? Well, I'll tell you... Uh... I brought out my original. That's what I was just dusting because I had it up on my shelf without any covering. So this is the original design. Um, it has been redesigned by not not by me though, by mm -hmm. some person. We'll call him Designer X, mm -hmm. which is actually a pretty good name for Designer X, or maybe Designer D. <laughs> anyway, so, so I'm just going to show off the, the the original design. Yeah, uh, which. It was based on the uh, movie and the um, show. yeah, I guess it was the movie version okay. or the TV show version um, because we have the cowboy in there mm -hmm. as the uh, pilot, right? In fact, he has like you know the white handled six guns and the whole the whole works, which which is kind of a nice homage to to, to Mash and yeah. I believe at the time we did um, Brick Media did uh, a hula hand character and a Pierce. Mm -hmm. I think that's as far as it went. We had little okay. animators. Would have been nice to do a radar, but you know, people can do that on their own, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so so that's where it started with uh, doing one based on the TV sh TV show. Um, it hasn't changed a whole lot um, as far as overall structure, but Dan made some improvements to this. So he asked me to do this simply because I, you know, most of it is, I guess, the original de design from the one I designed. Right, uh, but he added you know the little yellow on the tips, and then this cool um, rear rotor. It's got the nice this this all printed on there, mm -hmm. uh, and then of course I think it was updated with the uh, the way that the this particular one had uh, protection the for the stretchers. Yeah, and the stretchers was cool. I I, I rarely I actually have the part right here. Let me just pull it out. So this part here. I really get a chance to use it. I'll put it up really close so people can see it. It's a one by two with two bars on the side. Mm -hmm. This doesn't come into play very often. And I'm like, wow, he made that stretcher out of that. Maybe that was an original idea. Maybe he, he got the idea from something else that he had done before. But I thought that was brilliant. Um, it makes a fantastic stretcher. Um, and then, of course, you have places to, you know, there's studs on here. So you can attach your wounded warrior's exactly. legs there so you won't fall off while you're flying. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the idea for the for this one with these little sort of um, the domes on the front. Mm -hmm. You can actually take the hair off the minifig and he can fit his head inside of there mm -hmm. and be carried carried away to, to safety. But uh, this this is this is a really cool idea. And this is all printed on here. It's really nice. And then he's got a new pilot in there. Um, I think... At the time, we didn't really do, we just did a generic part for the uh, instrument panel, but he's mm -hmm. got a really nice printed part in here. The detail on there is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Eight different dials on here, plus some switches, and everything is, you know, pretty clear, actually. Mm -hmm. Even with my old tired eyes with my, my aging glasses, I can still kind of see that. So, And then he added this... Uh, Brilliant idea down here. I, I don't remember actually what I had done originally. I actually put a pair of binoculars in. But for this piece here, we have two uh, 1.5 bar with clip holding these two flags on for this mm -hmm. part of the uh, rear section. And he put a little binoculars here to hold them together because binoculars are basically two bars stuck together. Mm -hmm. So it's it's perfect. Um, I don't think I did that originally. I think I used a U clip in between here mm -hmm. to just keep them together. But that actually just to, to complete that. So more or less the the fuselage. I guess that's what you call this, right? The fuselage mm -hmm. is pretty much the way I had created it. He didn't change a whole lot there. Um, the engine is pretty much the same, but he did make some improvements. He added a this on the bottom so you could put that flag there, which that's nice. Mm -hmm. And a little red light. Um, because, of, of course, a lot of times when you do these designs and you're doing your research, there's no picture of the bottom. Right. Or 
you don't spend enough time looking at video and, and you know, watching it when it goes by and seeing the bottom mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. I know Dan's probably more thorough than I am when it comes to researching. Um, so he added some some details on the bottom here. We do, I didn't add that kind of a thing here. I just didn't think, you know, mm -hmm. I just don't think about things. It's like, oh, I'll just put that there and that'll be fine. Well, and an opportunity to add a little bit more printing and then just the color that you get from the from the Red Cross as well is kind of nice to to a kit like that to just bring, you know, a little liveliness. Exactly. I, I We might have talked about that last time with the landing craft, which I think is coming probably fairly soon. Mm -hmm. Mania, is it's blue and white, right? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if you're in the ocean and you're trying to evade detection, right, you don't want to call attention to yourself by shooting flares off. Hey, good fireworks. Yeah, hey, I'm okay. here. Hey, shoot at us. So we don't do, but I couldn't help myself putting a little bit of red into that kit. Mm -hmm. Just, just makes everything a little bit more uh, lively. You know, it's, uh, I think that's why we did, you know, we added a little red uh, fire extinguisher here. Right. We add a little bit to that one. Um, but yeah, you're right. The white and red on here looks really sweet. So mm -hmm. yeah, so right down to the, yellow tips and stuff too. Yeah. And I probably didn't put these bottom pieces on correctly. I was doing it last night. I was getting sleepy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, so it's a great kit. I mean, you've got the, 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 the nice printing on here. You had this yellow on here, which actually, again, the contrast yep. makes it look super nice. Right. So it went from a, from a B plus to an A plus. Right. Sure. What, so, I think this one was good to start with, but this one just got it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Well, and the customer response was unbelievable. I mean, I think we did a double batch of those right out the gate, and they didn't even last a day, um, just because this one had been missing from the from the lineup for so long. And it's such an iconic piece. Even if you're not a fan of the TV show Mash, you right. probably know the H thirteen Sioux helicopter. You know, just because it's it's so. I mean, they use them to spray for mosquitoes up here now. Like that's <laughs> they're all right. over the place. Well, yeah, and it was it was the rescue helicopter of the time, right? This is the one that's lightweight. You could get in and out pretty quickly. You could pick. You could put pontoons on it mm -hmm. and probably pick up people on the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there, it's. Uh, there right. was even a small gunship variant, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to fly into combat with in that little thing with gun strap for the side, but hey, it it did exist. I think I saw. I think I saw that it was uh, like a rack of of that uh, M5. Um, 50 calibers on each side, right? Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, now they'd probably put Gatling guns or something like that if it was if they were to do it today. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I remember when I was doing my research. It's like, oh, well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But you know, prote yeah, protection wise, you got like a little glass dome over you <laughs> right. with with a little thing on there that's like a bullseye, right? To take an aim at. <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, and obviously the, the real important role that this helicopter played was just the, the battlefield casualty rate, the, the speed in which people could get wounded soldiers to these, these field hospitals. And obviously that did play a huge role in, in the show, um, but was also something that pretty much changed warfare forever. Right. The speed at which you can actually move troops in and out with, uh, with a helicopter versus uh, trucks or mm -hmm. paratroopers or whatever. Yeah. I mean, paratroopers go in. Exactly. Out. Unless you unless you're Batman with a sky hook, you're not going to get back out the same way you got in. <laughs> with a balloon, right. a balloon just pop you out. out I of love that work. scene. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I mean, they do that in movies every once in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was it was at a uh, um, oh the uh, the <laughs> sorry my my brain again shut off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Fast and the Furious. I think they did that, didn't sure. they? Sure. One movie where they attached some guy to uh, a cable, or maybe that was the A Team. I can't remember what movie it was now, but I mean, basically they just lit, they just inflated a balloon and he flew up, and then a plane <laughs> came and snatched him away uh, with the big, the big tweezers in front. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that stuff is crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. really fun concepts. Gotta love movies. Yeah, so I mean, you know, Dan gave me the credit for this. I mean, I kind of wish he would have put both of our names on here. Um, because I didn't take it to the next level, mm -hmm. but I, he's being very generous, which <laughs> I, I really appreciate. Again, you know, for the most part, the overall 
sort of flavor of it is the original design. Right. But he, he did add, and I, I think I, when it, whenever I would make a kit, I always, in the back of my mind, thought, wouldn't it be nice if someone gets this kit at home, they've got a compartment, let's say, for an engine, they build their own engine, put it in there, or they add something else to it to, to customize it. Yeah. And it just takes it to the next level. So I think that's the beauty of this is that you can do a kit. Oh, yeah. I think at, at first, some. I'm sorry, I just noticed that some of these were originally were stickers. Of course, it's better to have printing, which you guys are doing the printing. So, um, but anyways, getting back to getting back to that is is having the collaboration, taking it to the next level by someone else. Mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic. So, yeah, it's definitely been a, a cool thing to see, and you know, to the point of the 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 updates, etc. I think that's something that you know Dan has made a huge priority, and and Mary is very naturally talented at is just the ability to kind of take an original work, see where you can improve it. And then like we were talking about in the previous video, um, how to streamline it so that it can be affordable and reproduced via BrickLink, you know, which, which is our supplier for that kind of stuff. And so it, it is kind of a, it is definitely a team process, but at the same time, you know, BrickMania did kick off with, with Dan having his name on a Lego box. And so that's something that we've wanted to continue through. And, you know, right. you, you were the designer. <laughs> well, yeah, right. Right, I just like sharing. I like sharing credit whenever, whenever I can. So absolutely, totally it's understand. Never, it's never, you know. Sometimes I'll like I'm working on this little uh, um, 7.5 centimeter can cannon uh, LE something or other. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the names of these things. But I, I'll show them pictures. I've shown them two different designs. It's like I like them both. I'm like that doesn't really help me. I want to know which one I should work on because I have sometimes I. Being being a, a Libra, and mm -hmm. I'm not blaming on being a Libra, but Libra would explain why I have trouble making decisions with certain things, right? Because you're constantly weighing, oh, that looks good for this reason, and mm -hmm. that looks good for that reason. So it just it's good to have feedback too. Um, but you know, when someone's being super supportive, sometimes the feedback is they're both you know it's, everything's fantastic, which is encouraging, but. It, sometimes it's good to like. I need some direction here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Push me one way or the other. So, so yeah. So, uh, I think it. I think it was a, a a good collaboration. Let's put it that way. Um, as far as the when we were talking about the agile in the last uh, last session, um, it's the same thing with this one. So you're building this fuselage. You're like, how in the hell is this thing going to stay together? It's Maybe even look at it on the box. It's like, of course, you see all the supports, but mm -hmm. it looks rather fragile. But really, when you put it together, it's not fragile at all. No, it is not. Every single support, like I was saying with the Agile, adds strength. And then you get to the you know the last few supports. It's like, whoa, this this thing is. And let you know, we have to give Lego some credit too, although there is some brick brick arms parts mixed in here. Um, Lego's parts being that they what they, what they are are strong to begin with and sometimes mm -hmm. I mean, you have a devil of a devil of a time you put a hose into the uh into the clip here it's a bar with clip mm -hmm. this thing here and it's like I, well, I need to get it out because i need to reposition something or it's like god why <laughs> so so kudos to no, i hate saying kudos high marks to uh, high marks to lego as well for making parts that are strong well and one of the things i love specifically about this helicopter and the style of helicopter too is you know you look at stuff like the ch-53 or some of the larger helicopters they're sturdy they're durable but at the same time it's not quite as much fun to like swoosh around this this <laughs> large kit you know what i mean but when you've right. got a little helicopter like that, yeah, you like you totally want to be able to play with that thing. And so the fact that it brings not only an accurate shape, but the durability that you need to be able to fly it around and do what you want, right. that's super important because it, it needs to be able to uh, complete process, even if it is just going to be used as a display model. Right. I mean, you do you do have bursts of like grabbing. I grab something every once in a while when I when I was building the agile. And I'm like, I was just playing with it a little bit. Heck yeah, that's what it is. You know, making machine gun sounds or or missile sounds, you know, and blowing up, blowing up my little ghost dog, for example. In this community, you are never too old to swoosh around a Lego helicopter, ever. <laughs> and if you want to have your ghost dog and your chameleon as your 
co-pilots, by all means. Be quite a party in that little cockpit there, but there is room. I think you can actually fit two minifigures in that in that cockpit, can't you? Um, I think so. It's a little probably a little bit of a tight fit, but a little tight. Okay. If one's got to sit on the other one's, you know, right leg, then so be it. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It, it, well, not with this cowboy hat. The cowboy hat right. takes up half the cockpit. This guy probably has a little bit better chance of having a, a buddy along. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you probably can fit two in there. Yeah, cool. W without the cowboy hat. Yes, uh, right. I was gonna say the. Uh, I think probably I stole this idea from Dan, but uh, we mix we mix the hinged parts. I noticed with, that with the one by two. Um, it's also a hinge, but it's uh, using a clip and a right. bar rather than two locking hinges. Um, they they call official hinges, which are like these here. Right, the ones that are meant to actually interface with that cockpit. Yeah, that when you're when you're when you put them together, they click. Right, so it's nice and strong, but the the angle never comes out exactly the way you want. Okay, right? so the only certain degrees. I, mm -hmm. I've never actually researched to see what degrees they are. Probably, if you divide one, two, three, four, I guess four or five, it's probably eighteen degrees each or something like that. But anyways, quick, quick math. But you, I don't know. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> but if you if you mix these two together, they still work together. Mm -hmm. They're just not as clicky, mm -hmm. right? So you can still get at something to hinge, but it's not so hard. And sometimes when you use the hinge pieces, and you want to like pop up this, because I could have used the hinge pieces. But you pull this up, it pulls the whole thing off because the exactly. hinge is so strong. So in this case, look how nice and tight that is. I can leave it anywhere and it, su it supports it. But it's not going to pull the whole thing off. And I'm not going to have difficulty opening and closing it. So, so that's a, just a little tip. that You can actually mix those parts. Again, I don't think I came up with it. Um, I think I probably saw it in one of Dan's kits. And then uh, Cody's like, whoa. How did you do that? <laughs> oh, you know, something like that. He, right. he, I don't think he had used that technique before. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe, I, maybe I got it backwards. Maybe I said it to him. But, but anyway, so yeah, we, we, again, we all learn from each other when you work, work like that. So, um, so when I call or I, I, I text or email for feedback, don't tell me everything is great. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> tell yes, me the connections yes. you want to see. No, it's fine. It, it's 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 really it's really on me. I have trouble making decisions. So, <laughs> so, you know, my my decision is like, well, I'll build them both. I'll send them both, and then you use whatever you want, twin, whichever one you right. want. Right, right. I totally get that. For me, I have to make I have to make a decision. So, anyway, so yeah, it's uh, I'm really I'm really uh, uh, happy with the way the new one came out, um, and again. I can see why it would be in demand for sure. Like you were saying, it's just, it's one of those things. It's like it became, because it's got some, you know, air flowing through it, meaning mm -hmm. it's not a solid design. There's a lot of interest to look at. There's a lot of interesting little angles and, and attachments and uh, visually it's, it's really visually enter entertaining, you know, mm -hmm. well, I do there. I do think a big part of it too, is like you were saying earlier, how does that come together? You yeah. know, it's, it's one of those that when you see it in Lego, you're like, wow, that looks really cool. But also, how the heck did they get that into that small space and get it to work like that? And then how does it stay together and not just stay together, but like actually be able to be swooshed around? Right. And then the, the, uh, the real one, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, if you watch a movie, it's called um, Where Eagles Dare. Okay. Clint Eastwood and, oh... Sir Anthony, Anthony married Hopkins? to, huh? Anthony, yeah. not Anthony Hopkins, no. Um, anyways, another famous actor. <laughs> but anyways, if you watch that movie, they actually land one of these at this e eagle's nest, or uh, it's not the eagle's nest. It's a it's a castle built basically on the top of a mountain mm -hmm. that you can only get up and down by mono or rail or um, sky sky rail or whatever you call those things. Okay. Um, but in part of the movie, I believe it's one of these. 
that they land there, like the Germans have invented this thing, you know, and they're using it for emergency, you know, supplies or whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Um, I'll, I'll research the movie and tell you the name of the actor next time. He was, <laughs> was married to uh, the guy that played Cleopatra, um, Elizabeth. Uh, oh my God, Taylor? Elizabeth Taylor. Yes, thank you. It was her ex-husband. Okay. Uh, Bill Murray makes fun of him in Scrooge because this is the way he. Oh, so I'll feel. I will go to the mountains of them <laughs> and do it for you. And anyways. <laughs> I need to brush my ha- brush up on my acting too. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. Everybody knows they're going to get a little extra flair whenever we do these videos. It's just, oh, it's just part of the can of a brand. Extra flair, yeah, extra flair. Uh, brain brain malfunctions. <laughs> whatever, whatever you want. Uh, uh, oh. This is Taylor and uh, anyway. Yeah. It'll come to me as soon as we get off. The right. Video. As soon as we hang up, that'll be that'll be what pops into your brain. <laughs> Famous actor, probably probably knighted by you know the British government at one mm-hmm. point. One of those actors, you know. Uh, anyway. I'm sure there's somebody in the comments who'll just be freaking out like, it's "Yeah, exactly. this person, come on!" I cannot remember his name. <laughs> and they're probably because a lot of the fans of Brickmania, they know all these movies. They've seen mm-hmm. them, you know, uh, as many times as I have. And this one was, it was a slow paced movie, but it was really cool. It, it, it's, uh, you know, there, some general has been captured and they have to go find out, you know, they have to go there and rescue him or, or, or off him because he knows too much. Mm-hmm. Right. And then there's some twists that go on during the movie that some of the characters didn't even know what was going on until, until, uh, you know, it's, it's all happening. Um, so yeah, that's a good one, you know, out of, out of my, Top ten. That's probably my top ten. Oh, um, cool. Favorite movies. Clint Eastwood's in it. Mm-hmm. Can't go wrong with Clint Eastwood. No, Clint Eastwood's in it, and uh, he's dressed, you know, as a, a, a German, like a, you know, saboteur, dressed in German garb, but he's a saboteur. Right? Mm-hmm. So, anyway, enough of that. But, Definitely one to add to the list. Like yeah. we were saying earlier, though, this one, this uh, kit does come with a custom minifig. So now let's kick things on over to Landon, take a little bit closer look at the minifig included with the MASH helicopter. All right, and now for the minifig portion of this video, I'm going to turn things over to Landon because what's a helicopter without a pilot? There we go. There we go. Um, Korean War era, era minifigure. Um, some of this artwork you've seen before, a lot of it has been updated, uh, and there's some brand new stuff going on here as well. So. Starting at the top, it's the return of that classic cigar head. Yes. Ever, ever popular. Love it. Dan was like, oh, we gotta get the cigar head back in play. So um, maybe he's, he's a, uh, um, I don't know if he's smoking a cigar as he's flying it. That's pretty, that's cool. <laughs> he's a badass. He, that's pretty badass. Um, uh, at the time, I don't believe that there was a dedicated like helicopter pilot helmet. So this is sure. just an M1 steel pot helmet. Mm-hmm. Um, just for, for some protection. Um, then moving down, we have that nice uh, flight jacket. So that's some brand new artwork on there. Uh, and I'm really pleased with how that turned out. Um, it's kind of got a little bit of a blue, uh, I, I did a little bit of bluish tinge to it with mm-hmm. some color shifting. So this figure is actually, overall, the entire figure is an olive minifigure. It is olive. Which okay. is one, one of my favorite colors to work with, actually. Because mm-hmm. um, it, it's, it's close to, uh, it's close enough to a, a military olive. The Lego olive, I think, is a bit too vibrant. Yep. But it's a nice kind of middle ground color mm-hmm. where I can play with it and make it go in different directions. So with the jacket, I have it shifted a little bit blue. Mm-hmm. And with the pants, I have it shifted a little bit more towards the yellow side of it. But there, there isn't really much actually ink on this thing at all. It's just you can really push it in either direction and make it look like two completely different colors. How phenomenal is that? That's one of my absolute favorite things to look at, just the detail that you're able to get with this color shifting. What an awesome yeah. process. And I mean, it lets you capture the non like jumpsuit look right. so much better than if yeah. you were to just be like, yeah, well, it's green pants right. and green shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, maybe in real life they were trying to get the same color green, but that's never, right. it's, it's almost impossible to do, especially like when you're dealing with different materials, mm-hmm. like this would be, or with different era of, of uh, equipment. Mm-hmm. So that jacket, for example, that's like, I, I believe that dates back to like end of World War II. So you can sure. actually see the uh, Army Air Corps uh, or Army Air Force's insignia 
mm-hmm. on the on the shoulder of this guy, and that's kind of so it would be like an older jacket that he that he had he kept in, into the war. Um, some new fur on top of the that jacket as well. Okay, uh, pistol belt, and we had these trousers, and then the um, those russet colored boots, mm-hmm. um, kind of iconic of that era as well. Uh, overall, it's a, it's it's a simple like overall loadout. Like he's just got a pistol and a right. jacket, clean but, fig. It, yeah, I think it's I think it's one of the, the sharpest looking figs that we've done in a while. So I'm extremely pleased with how this guy turned out, and I hope that you guys enjoy it. Yeah, you should be pleased. It really added a lot to this kit. Yeah, it was a, it was a cool addition yeah. to have in there. So I, I really really like it as well. Mm-hmm. And man, I just that color shifting process. <laughs> it's cool. It's, it's so just, much fun. Yeah, I'm such a fan of it. I really like how you, if you look at some of the source imagery that that Landon uses, you know, you you see the image and you're like, how on earth do you translate that? To Lego. I mean, it's like the guy. Yeah, the guy maybe is kind of green, but like this is different. This is right. different. You can do so much with ink, but really just capturing that kind of like from a distance view, mm-hmm. you just can't beat that color shifting. So excellent job once again. There you have it, the minifig portion. That will conclude the designer's test for the Mash helicopter. Thank you very much for watching.